I'd like to talk a little bit about point clouds, STL data, how the data is gathered, as well as what it's useful for. Now, when you're designing something, a lot of times it's really easy to make a clay model or a cardboard model, carve something, whittle something, you have an idea, you're sculpting something out in the real world. When you're done, you scan it in and you bring it into your CAD system. Now there's different ways that you scan the data and depending on the type of scanner that you use and the type of output that it gives you, you may end up with an STL or a point cloud or in this case it says cloud of points. Now all this is is a representation of whatever it is you've scanned with points, STL and cloud of points. So it doesn't matter the format that you end up with, doesn't matter what you import in with, point cloud, STL, you can basically make one from the other and, and, and so on. Now the reason why we use point clouds, the reason why we use a singular entity like this is if I analyze this thing, what you'll notice is that this has got 174,000 points. And this is just an armrest, okay? And I could reduce the amount of points on this. And I can easily you know, bring this down, maybe half the amount, quarter of the amount. The fewer points I have, the less uh, resolution, the less fine or the, the, the less clean the point cloud looks. I mean, the points are further spaced apart. Now, um, if I want something that has a high level of accuracy, I have to have more points. So the idea of a point cloud is to take all those points and the STL and group them into a singular entity to work with. There's things that I can do with this now. It almost acts like a regular part, almost like surface data. I can split it. I can draw lines on it. I can analyze it. I can analyze to it. So there's a lot that I can do with it. And by having it as a singular entity, makes things happen a lot quicker. It's not like having almost 200,000 points in the tree. Good luck with working with that many points as singular entities. Now, um, with a cloud of points versus an STL, what you'll see is you'll see all of the individual points. Now, this STL was basically made from the cloud of points or the other way around, doesn't matter. If I hide show that, what you're going to see is that STL and that point cloud are identical. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter what you bring into CATIA or an X or whatever tool you're using, they're going to be able to import that data, whether it's an STL or point cloud, and you're going to be able to work with that data respectively. The thing is, um, what confuses, I've noticed a lot of people is, is, well, what's the difference between a point cloud and an STL? Well, there's different points for each one. The STL is identical to the point cloud, but what it's done is that it's filled in the gaps in between the points with triangular surfaces. And I'll show you that here in a minute. So that is really the only difference between the two. If I go into the STL, you'll notice that it looks colored. It looks like an actual full object. And the STL has the same basic geometric mathematical properties of the point cloud except for the triangles filling in those empty spaces between those points. So the fewer points that I use, the larger the triangles. The more points that I use, the smaller the triangles. The higher the fidelity, the, the, the higher the resolution. So again, with an STL, I can cut sections, I can do this, I can do that. If I go into the STL and I right mouse click and go into properties, you'll notice that I have my mechanical, I have my feature properties, the name of it. I have my graphic properties, so here's the color, fill color. So if I wanted to, I can, I can change that. Right. Now it's got a magenta look to it. So you can basically paint it whatever color that you want. Other things that I can do is I can go into display modes. And under display modes, you'll notice with the STL, that I have this mesh. This mesh allows me to say I want to look at it flat. Right now, that mesh with smooth, what it does is it sort of smooths out the corners of those triangles and makes it look like it's an actual smooth part. With it flat, I'm going to look at each one of those facets individually, independently, without it sort of smoothing it out into the next. Next is the individual triangles and the vertexes. 
Here you can show free edges and non-manifold edges as well. I'm going to hit apply and select OK. And what I want you to notice is, let me zoom up on this, let me zoom, zoom, zoom way up on it. The point cloud is now, looks like it's being hidden away. And the reason being is, is because the points of the point cloud are at every one of these vertexes. So that is the triangle that I'm talking about. Every point creates a vertex for the mesh. And that's one of the reasons why STLs are a little bit easier to work with is because you can change colors, you can visualize, you can see sort of what's going on. Um, the big one here is, well, you can see where the free edges at are on a mesh. Like in this case, I turned on the free edges or non-manifold edges. So you can get a pretty good indication of problem areas a little bit easier on an STL. You'll see things the way, like in this case, how the, the, the triangles are built. You'll see that um, in this case, you know, you have a, you had a hard seam and it put in uh, uh, or hard, that hard seam in, in said fashion. Okay, in the triangles, you can see what's going on with those triangles. And there's different tool sets for the mesh versus the cloud of points. Now, if I go back into the properties of this, you'll notice I also have information. And this is basically just pulling out the information you saw me pull out earlier. And then you also have cells. In this case, there's a singular cell here. This could mean that uh, maybe I had two or three or four different scanned objects and brought them in as a one big grouped object. How many cells would you have? If you've scanned four things, brought them in as a singular entity, you'd have four separate cells. That's what this is all about. And it's nice because you can go ahead and color each individual cell, give it a name, but I have a singular cell, so we won't get into that. I'll probably talk about doing that later on in another um, video. All right. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and hide the STL and look at that point cloud. If I go into the properties of the point cloud, here, you'll notice that cells, the same thing, information, <clears throat> excuse me, same thing. I have colored, I have sampling, right? That's that's only option I, I have here. There's no other visualization. One thing that I can do under graphic is you'll notice that, you know, the color is set, and then I also have a symbol is can be set. So right now it's the small tiny little point. If you want to, you can change the size of that, hit apply, and what you'll see is a larger point. Now it, it does fill up the screen a bit and this is one way that you can sort of fudge what this looks like. It's not the greatest but it's one way if you sort of wanted to fill in the empty spaces you can change that point size. So I'll go back into properties and by default it's this tiny tiny little point. Sometimes I go up to one that's slightly larger as you can see here, to get a really good indication of what's going on with those points, makes it a little easier to see. And then properties, I can go in here and change uh, the color as well. But that's really about it with the point cloud. Now, how do we get this kind of data? Well, you have various tools. You have a CMM. You have white light scanners, laser scanners, touch probes, Romer arms, ferro arms, all sorts of options to bring this kind of data into the 3D world. So the idea is, is you actually model something with clay, again, cardboard, whatever that may be. Once it's modeled, maybe you did an archaeological dig and you found some old bottles that you want to use. Uh, in, in modern day, in modern time, I've seen that happen a couple times. I've had people approach me with old wine bottles or old brandy bottles and say, hey, can you reverse engineer these? And the first thing I say is, yes, I just need a scan. And then make my data based off of that scan from that bottle. So it's, it's a really great, great way to import your data. So um, you have all of these methods of creating these points. Now, other things that you may have that uh, you'll note from like old, old aerospace days. And uh, V5 doesn't really do it. There's other CAT systems. NX has a tool where you may have a cloud of points, but those points are based off of the control vertices from a surface or a curve. And then you have the ability to go in there, pick those points, and those points are just, again, pure and, pure and simple, just the control vertexes for uh, a surface. 
So when you look at the points, they don't necessarily make sense, um, but when you create your surfaces through them, the control polygon of the surfaces run through those points to generate those surfaces. And the reason why they used to do that is, in the old days when computers weren't that powerful, you would generate each curve for the loft of an aircraft or for the wing, for whatever that may be, like for the space shuttle or any sort of aerodynamic properties. And those properties are defined by conics. So somebody would go through the trouble of laying out all those conics and they wouldn't lay the curve out, they would lay out the control points. So a conic is three, three basic, basically three points. So they'd lay each individual point out. And then when they would send out the, the part to be machined, the CNC person would machine based off of the control points. So that's an older method that uh, isn't necessarily used a whole heck of a lot anymore. It's, uh, automotive doesn't really use it, but you'd see that in, again, aerospace where aerodynamic properties, it's absolutely critical that you capture um, certain aerodynamic properties and having those points measured out to the fourth or fifth or sixth decimal places is gonna be critical. So. That's what a point cloud is. That's the whole purpose. That's where they come from. Someone sculpts, gets scanned in, brought into a CAD system, and then you begin your engineering based off of that point cloud. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'll be doing a, uh, an entire series on point clouds and cutting sections and things that you can do with them. This is just a basic, again, basic explanation of what cloud data is.